This lesson is on rational functions. This is section 2.5 from your book. So a rational function, rational function f of x is the quotient of two polynomial functions and for now we'll just call those ax and bx where b does not equal 0. So we have f of x equals a of x over some b of x. So we have a numerator over a denominator. Our denominator cannot be equal to 0. And basically there's are two functions or two lines or two x's or uh, let's look at an example. So one example of a rational function is 1 over x. So our a of x is just equal to 1. Our b of x is equal to x. So a very special thing happens when we have rational functions. We have um, oftentimes a vertical or a horizontal asymptote or both or several of these. Uh, we all know what a, an asymptote is. If we have our graph that is going like this, we have a vertical asymptote at this location. So as we're approaching some value, our f of x juts up to positive infinity or maybe it juts down to negative infinity. That's what we're saying when we have an asymptote. So we're not reaching that value and we have an infinite discontinuity at that location. So the rational function has a vertical asymptote. Whenever the denominator is equal to zero, so when we have this function, this uh, rational function, when it becomes undefined, that gives us a vertical asymptote at whatever x caused that function to be undefined. At that x equals something, that's going to give us a vertical asymptote. So all of a sudden our function is going to jut up or down to negative infinity or positive infinity. We can also have a horizontal asymptote. So in this picture above, we also look like we have a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero. And so that means we found x equals something to create our vertical asymptote. We're going to have y equals something else when we have a horizontal asymptote, which is a location where for this y, instead of actually reaching whatever that y value is, it also causes our function to jut off to some other location. We're never actually going to get quite there. So here are some, um, to find the horizontal asymptote, you're going to divide the numerator by the denominator. Okay, and then you evaluate your quotient. The quotient is the really important critical part of this. So we take a, at, a of x divided by b of x, and you can use long division or synthetic division. Uh, I prefer synthetic division, so that's what we'll do here. Um, and you're going to evaluate your quotient. What we don't care about right now really is the remainder. Okay, so there's some rules that are going to exist um, for horizontal asymptotes. If we have a of x over b of x, and we write that out as our polynomial, so we have a sub n times x to the n plus a sub n minus 1 dot 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 all the way until we get to our constant a, a 0, a sub 0, um, and then we have that over b m, b sub m um, times x raised to the m. So these, this a n and x, I'm sorry, this a sub n x n is our leading coefficient, right, in our highest degree n, uh, and our b sub m is our leading coefficient for our denominator with our highest degree of m that we're dealing with. So when n, n is less than m, so what does that mean? It means you have your numerator is some degree that is less than your denominator. So that could happen for 1 over x, that could happen for x over x squared, that could happen for 4 over x to the cu x cubed, right? All of these, our numerator is a less degree, smaller degree, lower degree than our denominator. Whenever that happens, your horizontal asymptote is y equals 0. We could prove this with division, but that's always going to be true. Whenever your numerator is a smaller degree than your denominator, the horizontal asymptote is at y equals 0. So at y equals 0, you're going to have a place where your graph is going to move off in other directions. It's never going to quite get there. If n equals m, the horizontal asymptote 
is equal to the leading coefficient of the numerator divided by the leading coefficient of the denominator. n equals m. So if we have 2x over 4x, this is the same as x over 2x, right? We have 1 over 2. What we're evaluating there is our leading coefficient, so 2 over 4 or 1 over 2. Okay, so that means at y equals 1 half for those equations, when those are equal, we're going to have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 1 half. Okay, the, maybe a better way to show that would be like 2x plus 1 or 2x squared over 4x squared plus x or something. What we care about is our leading coefficients and the numerator of the leading coefficient divided by the denominator, right? The last rule is that if n is greater than m, so if we have x squared plus 5 over x minus 2, there is no horizontal asymptote. So these are three rules that are really important to remember. When the numerator is a smaller degree than the denominator, when the numerator, the degree is equal to the degree of the denominator, and when the degree of the numerator is greater than the degree of the denominator. Okay, so let's do an example. We're going to use division in order to do this example, but just looking at this off the bat, we have the situation where the numerator is of less degree than the denominator, right? We have x to the 0 on top, and we have x to the 1 on the bottom. So we already know we're going to have a, a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. But let's prove it. So we're saying 2 divided by x plus 1, so if I have x minus c, I'm writing this as negative 1 over here. We know that our last column is just going to be our remainder. We're bringing this down. We don't even do anything else. That's the only thing we get to do with this synthetic division, right? We have 0, remainder 2. We could rewrite this as 0 plus 2 over x plus 1. What do we care about? We care about our quotient. So what was our quotient? Our quotient was 0. So that means your horizontal asymptote is at y equals 0. What about our vertical asymptote? What do we need for a vertical asymptote? We need this to equal 0. So when does x plus 1, our denominator, equal 0? When does that happen? Well, we solve. We get x equals negative 1. So at x equals negative 1, we have a vertical asymptote. At y equals 0, we have a horizontal asymptote. So let's look at the graph of this. Does that make sense? Does that seem to match? Sure. Let's look. We have an asymptote here in the horizontal at y equals 0. And in the vertical, at about x equals negative 1. Be sure to notice the scale. OK, let's move on. 2x over x plus 1. So we know from those rules above, these degrees are the same. So really all we care about is our leading coefficients. Right? It's going to be the leading coefficients divided by each other, the numerator divided by the denominator. Well, we can also solve this using long division or uh, synthetic division. So let's do that now. So we have 2x plus 0, x to the 0, right? This is x, x. We're going to get rid of our x's. We have 2 and 0. Synthetic division, we now write our x minus c. So we have negative 1 up in that corner bring down our 2. 2 times negative 1 is equal to negative 2. Add these together, we have negative 2. So again, what do we care about? We care about our quotient. So where are we going to have that horizontal asymptote? We're going to have it at horizontal at y equals 2. That's going to be where our horizontal asymptote is. If we wanted to rewrite this equation, it would be 2 plus, sorry, 2 minus 2 over x plus 1. Okay, we care about that too. What about the vertical asymptote? That's the same, right? We just solved this. We have the same denominator. So x plus 1, we're finding when that equals 0, minus 1, minus 1, x equals negative 1. So that's our vertical. Okay, let's do another one. And this is, we can check it with the graph, right? That makes sense. We expected to have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 2. 
That's entirely what we have. Vertical asymptote x equals negative 1. That vertical asymptote is in the same place that where we thought saw it before. Okay, this one. Our degree on the top, we have 2x squared over x plus 1. Our degree on the top is greater than our degree on the bottom. So if we go to our rules above again, what does that say? Our degree on top is greater than our degree on the bottom. There is no horizontal asymptote. There isn't one. Can we prove it? Can we find that out? What you're going to get when you divide this is some x term, right? If we have x squared divided by some x, we're going to be left with some x in the denominator. So instead of a horizontal asymptote, this is going to cause a slant. It's going to cause an asymptote at an actual linear function. So let's try to find out what that function could be. So again, we're going to do synthetic division. We have 2x squared, 0x, 0, and we're using negative 1. So we bring down that 2. We have 2 times negative 1 equals negative 1. I'm sorry, that's not true. 2 times negative 1 equals negative 2. Uh, add those together, we have negative 2. Negative 2 times negative 1 is equal to positive 2. Add that, you get in the bottom of your synthetic division, you have 2, negative 2, and 2, which means you have 2x minus 2 plus 2 over x plus 1. So again, we care about our quotient. So instead of a horizontal asymptote, we are going to have an asymptote at the line 2x minus 2. Where are we going to have our vertical asymptote? Again, it's the denominator here that we care about. So where x plus 1 equals 0, and we already found out that happens at x equals negative 1. So where we're going to have, we don't have any exactly horizontal asymptotes. We have a slant. So let's look at what that looks like. Oh boy, right? So we still expect that vertical asymptote here at x equals negative 1. And at, when we have this horizontal asymptote kind of thing, when we have this slant, this happens across this line here. 2x minus 2, that's what that line is. Notice the scale, okay? So you can always solve, you can memorize these rules and find, you know, when your horizontal asymptote is going to be 0, uh, and when n, e n equals m, when the degree of your numerator equals your denominator, that the horizontal asymptote is just going to be your leading coefficients divided by each other. But also you can do the division if you forget. You don't need to remember the cheat. Okay? So when the numerator and the denominator have common factors, that means when you have something like x minus 1 in the top and x minus 2 in the top, and then in the bottom you have x minus 1 and x plus 3, or something like that. If you have a polynomial and you end up with those factors, the graph of the function has a removable discontinuity, also called a hole, at the zeros of these common factors. So for the example I wrote, I wrote x minus 1 times x minus 2 over x minus 1 times x plus 3. That means we're going to have a hole whenever these common factors produce a zero. Where does x minus 1 produce a zero? Produces a zero at positive 1, right? So at positive 1, you would have a hole. Here's another example of that. You just have x minus a, x minus b over x minus a times x minus c. At that x minus a that you had in common, you're going to have a zero at a, right? At x equals a, which means your function f of x is going to have a hole at x equals a. And that's how you see that drawn now. One last thing for this lesson, rational equations involving fractions can be solved by multiplying each term by the least common denominator, the LCD. So let's look at an example. We have x plus 6 over x minus 8. That's our original equation. If we wanted to solve this, find the zeros, right? x plus 6 over x minus 8 equals 0. The way we solve for x is to first multiply by what's in that denominator everywhere. So we have x times x minus 8, we have this uh, fraction 6 over x minus 8 times x minus 8, and then we have this whole thing set equal to 0, which we also multiply by x minus 8. You could also do the multiplication of x minus 8 over x minus 8 in one side. You're going to end up with the same thing. I just wrote the x minus 8 on the other side to begin with because it's easier because it's going to go away. 
So then we cross out this x minus 8. We can simplify. We get x squared minus 8x, right? x squared minus 8x plus 6. That's all you end up with because you canceled out the x minus 8. So that equals 0. Now you have a simple quadratic. All you have to do is plug it into the quadratic equation to solve. You get 8 plus or minus square root of negative 8 squared minus 4 times 1 times 6. All that over 2 times 1. That simplifies to 8 plus or minus 2 root 10 over 2, which simplifies to 4 plus or minus root 10. So that's how you solve those if you have x plus 6 over x minus 8.